Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for the uh, introduction, uh, uh, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, I'm pleased to be uh, here today to share my own personal experience and uh, the general situation of human rights violations in Eritrea. As some of you may already know, uh, Eritrea is oftentimes mentioned in the media, uh, specifically in relation to the growing crisis of migration in Europe. Uh, Eritreans being among the highest number of newly arriving asylum seekers in Europe. And everything uh, that has to do with this problem is uh, or needs to be understood in the context of the human rights situation uh, in the country itself. So in an event like this, where we gather together to spotlight critical human rights issues around the globe, uh, it for us, for the uh, who are involved actively in the Eritrean cause of human rights, we consider this as one of the most important forums. Uh, if we look back into four, three, or five years from now, uh, you wouldn't see Eritrea represented um, enough in such kind of international forums. But in the last two to three years, the international community uh, is now paying, I would say, proper attention on what's currently taking place in Eritrea. And such is the case since the appointment of the Special Rapporteur by the Human Rights Council in 2004 12 uh, and then since the establishment of the Commission of Inquiry in 2014. And as we know, by now the Commission of Inquiry has already published its first groundbreaking report sometime last year in June 2015, in which the Commission says the overall situation of human rights violations in Eritrea may even amount to that of crimes against humanity, and it doesn't get as bad as it is when we say crimes against humanity because these are one of the three major categories of crimes which are prohibited by international law and which may even fall under the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court in The Hague. So whether the matter will reach up to this level or not, we will all see together now that we are expecting the second report of the Commission of Inquiry in June of this year. Uh, but the, the, the report itself tells volumes about the situation of human rights in Eritrea. The sad part of the story, of course, with every human rights situation, everything is so sad. But the experience in Eritrea uh, is that this is happening only in a matter of about 25 years since the independence of Eritrea. So Eritrea, historically, it's one of the youngest countries in the world. As I said, uh, it has been only 25 years since it achieved independence from Ethiopia. And in such a very short period of time, everything has gone upside down. We, w we never expected that a government which was the most popular liberation movement in our history would become one of the most despised governments in our history. So uh, this, this is what it really makes it very sad. And right this year, in May 2016, Eritrea will, of course, will be celebrating. I don't know if it will be celebration, but it will be uh, 25 years since independence. And I hope in, in the next months or years to come, hopefully not years, but maybe months, we might be able to see some change uh, at the ground level. So all we are trying to do is, when we come to events like this, it's to invite the attention of the international community, but in addition to that, we also would like to build networks to uh, broaden our solidarity with people, with peace-loving people of the world, throughout the world, and of course, at the same time, also, at the same time also sharing our experiences with our fellow speakers coming from different corners of the world. But at personal level, when I speak on events like this, it's of course without forgetting uh, the, the different obstacles and challenges I, I, I go through my life. As I will explain in, the, in great detail tomorrow, um, I oft, oftentimes I receive intimidations and death threats from staunch government supporters. And uh, for one of the most recent examples being the one I received last year when we were organized the biggest ever uh, demonstration in Geneva 
protesting human rights violations uh, in Eritrea. It turned out to be, of course, with more than 5,000 people flocking from different parts of Europe and the world coming to Geneva, we organized the largest mass rally against human rights violations in Eritrea, at the same time demonstrating our support to the United Nations Mandated Commission of, in Commission of Inquiry. And in relation to this and other previous uh, work on human rights, I have been receiving a number of intimidations, and, uh, including the stress. But as we say in human rights, you don't get your rights for free. You have to earn them because rights are not given for free after all. And it's after a long and bitter struggle that we may finally achieve what we want to see in Eritrea, which is a political system based on rule of law, a political system which is accountable to the people. And human rights violations should never be repeated in our history again. This is not what we fought when we achieved independence 20 years, 25 years back, and that's what we are trying to do now. And of course, we know we cannot, we cannot achieve this, we cannot do this without the support of our international friends, without the solidarity of the international community, and that remains to be our main message that, uh, that I would like to repeat today and in the uh, follow-up uh, session we also have tomorrow. So, see, well, most of it, as I said before, will be presented in my speech tomorrow, but I think uh, by, by way of brief introduction, I think uh, this, should be, uh, this should do for today about the general situation in Eritrea and my own personal experience as a human rights defender, of course, an exiled human rights defender, so to say. Thank you so much.